Jerusalem. They survived on rice and bread and slept as best they could on chairs and benches. At least one man tried to escape his captors when an Israeli airstrike caused the building he was in to collapse. A young boy kept a diary of his experience. The stories of hostages kidnapped by Hamas on October 7 are emerging, slowly and in fragments, as dozens of Israeli women and children, as well as foreign workers, are released from Gaza as part of a humanitarian pause in the fighting. Israel and Hamas agreed Monday to extend the pause for two additional days, under a deal brokered by Qatar and Egypt that will allow more hostages to be exchanged for Palestinian women and teenagers in Israel prisons. Eleven Israelis and 33 Palestinians were released later Monday. For the families of the hostages, the silence from their loved ones over seven long weeks has been tortuous. Now, as some are reunited, there are new challenges to navigate and unseen wounds to consider. Most of the freed hostages are being treated in hospitals, far from the gaze of the media and a shell-shocked country that is still searching for answers. In recent days, a handful of the former captives' relatives have given interviews, providing a first, limited glimpse into their ordeal. Much of the information about where, and how, the hostages were held remains elusive. Psychologists have warned of the dangers of pressing the newly released for information, citing the risk of re-traumatization. The captives, including young children and the elderly, were ripped from their families after Hamas militants killed loved ones and neighbors, sometimes in front of them. Israel's retaliatory military campaign has killed more than 13,000 people in Gaza, shattering entire neighborhoods and hostages' families' fear putting the lives of their relatives in danger. Some of them decided to stay longer in the hospital in order to cope with the event. Itai Pesek, the director of Sheba Medical Center's Safra Children's Hospital, said Monday. We're also exposed to very difficult, painful, complex stories about captivity. Despite the optimistic appearance, the captivity period was difficult and complex, and it will take time for wounds to heal, in an online news conference Sunday, the families of several former Israeli hostages said their loved ones had yet to fully grasp the extent to which their cases had gripped their country, and the world. For now, they were staying in the loving embrace of a small circle of relatives. Yaffa Adar, 85, counted every one of her more than 50 days in captivity and never lost hope that she would eventually be returned to Israel. Her granddaughter Adva said. I'm so proud to be her granddaughter, she said. It means the world to see that she is with us. Adar and Karen Munder, 54, returned much thinner than before, relatives said. They were eating, but not regularly and not all of the time, said Marav Moore Raviv, Munder's cousin.